Hi, have you ever tossed pancakes? We're going to look at a very classic problem known as the pancake problem, which is a type of sorting algorithm where we look at ways of sorting different size pancakes according to certain conditions. One common way is to follow the three steps that you can see on the screen. So, let's suppose we have a stack of pancakes all of random different size. And the idea is to get them in order of increasing size from the top to the bottom or decreasing from the bottom to the top. First thing we do is to find the largest pancake in the group and from that flip over all of the pancakes starting at the largest one that we found. That brings that large one to the top. Now we flip as many pancakes as we need starting from some place at the bottom all the way to the top so that the large one that we've just found rests on a larger one on the bottom. And then we repeat that process until all of them are sorted. And that's what iteration is all about. So let's have a look at how this works. Let's say we have four pancakes of different size and we're going to sort them according to the algorithm. So the first thing, find the largest one, which is pancake number four, and flip the top three pancakes starting at four. So pancakes three, two, and four, we will flip over to get pancake four to the top. And once it's at the top, we then flip over all of the pancakes so that pancake number four ends up on the bottom. And that's what step two is all about. And now we repeat the method. This is what we have. And now out of the remaining pancakes, which is one, three, and two, we find the largest pancake, which is pancake number three. And we flip pancakes three and one to obtain pancake three on the top, like that. And then flip over pancakes two, one, and three, so that pancake three is now on our previously found large pancake number four. So we're building up the bottom layers in decreasing size from bottom to top. That just leaves us now with pancakes one and two. Obviously the larger of those two pancakes is pancake number two. So we're going to flip those two over like that and we've completed our sorting. Here is an example of the method using 10 pancakes. We'll use slow speed so we can see what's happening. The biggest pancake is 10, so that's been taken to the top. And now these ones will be flipped. And now flip to get the 10 to the bottom. And you can see 8 is the next one. Going to the top. These will be flipped over to get the 8 to the bottom next to the 10. And the process is continued. 7 at the top and now 7 at the bottom. Another 7 at the top. And then get that 7 to the bottom by flipping. 6 is the next biggest one. Move to the top. So you can see it's step 1, step 2, over and over until we end up with the discs in ascending order. And we're almost there. 5 to the top and now... 5 will go to the bottom on top of the 6 by flipping those in pink. And the last two. Flip those over. There we go. And finally, flip 1 and 2. And we've completed this example and it took us 15 moves or flips. One of the things we should consider is what's the maximum number of flips of pancakes that we need to perform to obtain our final result. Obviously, if we say infinity, that's true. Is it 100,000? In other words, given an initial amount of pancakes, how can we predict in advance the maximum number of flips that we have to perform. That is called the upper bound. And we're going to find the upper bound using this method. 
Let's run a simulation using six pancakes and five trials. And remember what we're expecting two times six minus three, which is nine fl maximum flips. And after five trials, we've got a maximum number of flips of seven. Let's increase the number of trials. Let's make it 50. And we'll see if we get nine for the maximum number of trials. At the moment, maximum number of flips is seven, eight, and we're about halfway through the 50 trials and we've reached the maximum number of flips and of course we're not expecting that to increase. Let's let it run to the 50 trials which is just about there. There we go 48, 49 and 50 trials. As we saw from the simulation we can summarize the results. Here we have different numbers of pancakes to begin with and how many flips are required to obtain the maximum. So for example, for two pancakes only requires one flip, three pancakes, a maximum of three flips is required, all the way up to 10 pancakes where we know that we don't need more than 17 flips to sort them. There is a relationship that connects those two quantities, the variables P and F. Here it is here, that F is equal to 2P minus 3. That means the number of flips required is twice the number of pancakes you start with, less 3. And we can check that. For example, when we have 8 pancakes, the number of flips is 13. If we put 8 for P here, we have 2 8s of 16 minus 3, which is 13. This is a linear relationship. In other words, if we sketch the graph of F against P, we will obtain a straight line. So we can use it for prediction. So for example, to work out how many flips are required, if we had 11 pancakes, we would simply put 11 with the P's and work out 2 times 11 minus 3, which is 19. Now, can we prove that that relationship is valid, is true? We can. Let's suppose to start with, we have some random assortment of pancakes like that. We know that for each of the steps one and two, we require two flips because each pancake needs one flip to get it to the top and another flip to get it to the bottom on top of the next smaller size pancake. If we just look at the first P minus two pancakes, where P is the number of pancakes we begin with, then the number of flips required to sort them is two times P minus two. And it would look something like we have here in the middle. That leaves one extra flip to sort the last two pancakes here at the top to make them look like that. So the total number of pancakes will be the sum of 2p minus 2 and 1, which is what we have down here at the bottom. And that simplifies to 2p minus 3. So that's a straightforward justification or proof of why 2p minus 3 is an upper bound using this algorithm of sorting. Now it turns out that back in 1979, Bill Gates, yes, the Bill Gates who is owner of Microsoft, when he was a student at university in collaboration with a colleague, performed some quite complicated mathematics to find a better upper bound. And here it is here. 5 over 3 times the number of pancakes plus 1. That is more accurate, as we'll see in a moment, than the one that we've developed. But about 20 years later, a group of mathematicians managed to find an even better estimate, which is this one. 18 divided by 11 times the number of pancakes. So let's see what this means. Here we have the graphs of the three relationships. So here's our one in blue. 
and Bill Gates relationship here, the orange, and the most recent one down here. Now what can we interpret from this? Notice that at our one, the blue, up until about pancake number eight is the most accurate for upper bound because it is below the other two graphs. But as we get beyond eight pancakes, this upper bound is below, which means it's more accurate. But our one is still more accurate than Bill Gates' algorithm up to about pancake number 14, after which Bill Gates' algorithm is more effective than our one. But above all that, the most recent one, this one, for pancakes above eight is the most accurate estimate and that's the one we should be using. There are variations of the pancake problem of course and one of them is to look at whether or not each side of the pancake is burnt or not. You might like to investigate that further and also investigate the proofs of Bill Gates estimate and this one. If you have any questions 